One of the most striking themes in the Form 3 Plus is how much they're taking the guesswork out of using the printer and how simple they've made, for example, swapping materials. And there is some stray resin on this cartridge, so I'm wearing gloves. It is a very well-rounded ecosystem, or should we rather say a very nice walled garden with a fun playground, but unbreakable locks on every exit. That's part of the deal you enter when getting a Formlabs machine, especially the Form 3 generation. But is it worth it? And does it even matter to you? That's what we're going to find out in this video. In either case, I'm still super impressed by how straightforward it was to get to Form 3 Plus running. And if you want to get running with learning about how to work with data, check out today's sponsor, DataCamp. DataCamp teaches you the tools to convert raw data into usable information. Pick and choose any of their online courses or take their free assessment to get personalized recommendations. DataCamp can even help to prepare you for a job that involves working with small or large data sets and offers certification for your newly acquired skills. Whether you want to brush up your statistics skills or learn how to program in the R language, DataCamp has got you covered. Become data fluent today and check out the first chapter of any DataCamp course for free using the link in the description below. Thanks again to DataCamp for sponsoring this video. So it all begins with the unboxing, where everything is really well labeled. Uh, there's that consistent blue color for packaging that needs to be removed. Components only fit in one way, and they all click into place to let you know that you've inserted it correctly. When I unboxed this, I was already fascinated by how well thought out even the simple experience was of getting the printer running for the first time. The machine itself also makes sure that prints have the best possible chance to succeed. So it's creating a controlled preheated environment inside the printer at 35 degrees Celsius, getting the resin nice and liquid. It also has checks for whether the printer is set up level and it will instruct you to adjust the printer's feet if it's set up crooked. The resin vat or the tank as they call it has a little stir over here uh, that keeps the resin well mixed. There is a mechanical float also in that corner uh, that keeps track of the resin level. And because the printer uses resin cartridges that sit in the printer itself in the back here, it automatically keeps the resin level topped up before and during printing. So not only is running out of resin something you're just not going to have to worry about, unless of course you're going to be using more than one full one liter cartridge at once, but you're also handling, theoretically, the raw resin much less than on most other printers. The cartridges are chipped, so the chip is right down here, and they keep track of how full they are. And because they communicate with the printer, and the printer is, of course, hooked up to Formlabs' online management platform, you automatically get a central inventory of all the resin cartridges your printer has ever seen, including how much you have left of each material. And materials are actually a pretty big point with the Formlabs ecosystem. To try out the printer, they've only sent me a pair of the basic gray resin cartridges, which is your typical, you know, hard and brittle SLA material. But if you want a material that is more ductile and durable or actually flexible, is D-Safe, certified for skin contact after curing, heat resistant, optimized for dental applications, etc. They've got it all. So usually when you swap materials, you would have to clean out the resin vat from all the old stuff before you can fill it with your new resin. And that is a huge pain to do. So what Formlabs are doing is just saying, hey, you know, keep the vat full and just grab a fresh one. They're even including a storage tray that keeps the release film at the bottom of the vat from getting damaged and a translucent cover in this way um, to let you know how full it is, what you've got in there, and to prevent you from spilling this thing during handling. So that's how you store these. These are stackable, which is very nice. Because the resin vats are also chipped, the chip is right back here, um, the printer also knows what resin you've last used with the vat, and it can warn you if you've got an incompatible resin loaded up in the printer itself refill back here and because the only parts that make contact with the resin are you know the cartridge uh, the vat including the little fill ramp back here where the resin pours onto and the platform swapping materials is a super streamlined process so yes everything on the printer is chipped and drn the resin the vat and the print files so it is a very closed off ecosystem 
The previous form 2 at least still allowed you to enable open mode, so you could use and experiment with your own resins. And that is now gone on the form 3 generation as well. Um, so you can really only use it with Formlabs resins. Replacement parts? Sure, fine. I don't think that's something where you would even want to use third-party parts, but with the resins, that's, you know, that same printer ink, uh, the razors and blades business model. And the Formlabs resins are expensive. This bottle of standard gray resin costs 160 euros, including tax. Uh, their better resins are around 210 euros, but the rigid 10k or castable wax premium resins are almost 300 euros per liter. Usually you pay 30 to 40 euros for a liter of decent resin, or even if you go with uh, Prusament Tough Resin, that's only 69 euros. Nice. So yeah, the Formlabs printer is expensive to buy and expensive to run, at least in the context of cheaper DIY machines. But if you compare it to the Stratasys, HP, 3D system sort of machines, the Formlab stuff is an absolute steal. And for the sort of applications and environments where it's competing with those brands, you do need to factor in other costs as well, like the labor and training cost of the people using the machine, uh, the potential losses when you needed a print that failed and isn't ready in time, or having access to support techs. You know, in those sort of environments, it's an absolute no-brainer that, for example, you would just spend uh, the 160 euros and buy an extra resin tank uh, to save your printer operator the time and risk of having to clean out a resin vat, even if it's just one or two times. That doesn't mean the Formlabs 3 Plus is anywhere close to perfect, though. And there are a couple of gripes that I have with the setup, mostly because some flaws are just unnecessary. So, starting with the experience of post-processing or finishing your parts off of the printer. You get this, this is the finish kit included with the Form 3 Plus, which is supposed to fill with isopropanol and then use the little uh, tray in here to place your parts onto and then wash them. I mean, sure it works, <laughs> but <coughs> it's just inadequate for a printer of this caliber. It's not even large enough to fit all the parts from the Form 3 Plus and once you've washed them, you still need to cure them somehow. Officially, Formlabs say you do not need to post-cure uh, prints with the basic resins, but honestly, an uncured resin part is not something I would want to touch with bare hands. Alternatively, you should just set them in front of a window. <laughs> really, you should just get the Form Wash and Form Cure, which are an extra 1300 bucks if you buy them together with the printer. Then, the printer has a white status light in the back here, and it also uses the illuminated Formlabs logo at the front of the machine as a status indicator. That's great, they start pulsing when the machine runs into an issue. But the one time that it did that for me, it actually gave me zero helpful information what was wrong or how I could fix it. Other manufacturers include a QR code on the screen and a link to a help article. Here, even Google only finds forum discussions that lead to, well, you're gonna have to contact support. Thankfully, in my case, simply restarting the print made the issue disappear. The printer also has internal statistics, tracking how many hours the laser was used and how long each resin tank has been in use. My resin tank apparently has been in use since 1969, and the laser is still brand new. Well. And then one last inconvenience about the resin tank and cartridge system. Uh, the tank itself in the printer holds quite a substantial amount of resin, and that has to be initially filled somehow. The official way to do this is to just chuck the resin cartridge in the printer and let the resin flow through the uh, rubber bite valve on the bottom of the cartridge. And while that is absolutely fine for refilling during a print, that first fill up would have taken at least half a day to get the machine ready to print. So chat on that unboxing live stream recommended unscrewing the relief valve up top here and just pouring in the resin directly. Which works, but it's not particularly elegant. And on the topic of resins, uh, the Form 3 Plus doesn't seem to have an activated carbon filter, so the entire room really smells of resin when you use it. Seeing some feedback from people actually using the Formlabs machines is pretty interesting. A lot of folks are super happy with them and don't seem to mind the lock-in and sometimes oversimplified approach, but there are also some that are quite a bit less happy with the machines and say they are repeatedly running into issues. I think it's pretty clear who this printer is intended for. And most likely, if you're watching this video, it's not you. 
The fact that the prices on the Formlabs online store are listed without VAT, and you know that they would legally need to be listed with VAT if it was a shop intended for private customers, and the fact that you're buying the printer with pro service packs for a thousand bucks per year, really drives it home that this is a corporate only tool. The Form 3 Plus makes sense when you need a resin printer that's easy to use and reliable, maybe in a shared environment, but you don't have the throughput requirements where the speed of something like an SL1S uh, and the cheaper materials that go with it would make up for that printer's smaller build space and the somewhat less simplified experience. Uh, the Form 3 Plus doesn't produce the most detailed parts ever, and raw materials are quite expensive. But where the Form 3 Plus does shine is in the experience of using the printer. Using a laser setup instead of a masking LCD is at best a decision purely for reliability at this point, and not because it produces better parts. For a lot of the stuff that you would have to actively think about with simpler machines, Formlabs already thought about that for you, and all you have to do is to make the decisions that the software or the machine can't quite make for you yet. So if you're not using the Form 3 Plus in a way where it's either generating a profit or saving you cost or time, you are using it wrong. This is not a tool you'd get because you're interested in the tech or want to play around with resin printers. It doesn't even give you the freedom to do that. And using it with the original Formlabs resins will get real expensive real quickly if you don't have a return on investment in mind. That's also why I didn't bring up patents so far. Yeah, of course, everything Formlabs does is patented. But in the environments this printer will be used in, literally nobody will care about that. The Form 3 Plus is a fascinating machine. It's not for everyone, but if your use case fits, chances are you're gonna have a great time with the Form 3 Plus. Just as I hope you're having a great time with this video series. Thank you to everyone who's supporting the channel through YouTube memberships or Patreon. You can find the details for that uh, below. Thank you for watching, keep on making, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.